Okay, so welcome everybody. In this afternoon, we have the pleasure to host uh, Professor Fang Kong Yu, works as professor at uh, New York uh, University at Albany. Uh, so uh, he actually studied the degree, the, the bachelor, the master, I think, in China, the Peking University and the Chinese Academy of Science, mm -hmm. if I remember well. Then uh, did the PhD in the US. Uh, in California, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. And then he started his career as a researcher and now as professor, ending up uh, in Albany. He's a renowned scientist uh, worldwide for uh, his expertise in uh, aerosol modeling, especially the nucleation processes, the macrophysics, uh, the fine part basically of the aerosol and the site distribution of aerosols. So he developed a, a model called APM, which is aerosol particle model, is the acronym, uh, which is used in many uh, models uh, that uh, needs aerosol information and simulation explicitly uh, in the world. And uh, uh, so today he will uh, uh, tell us about uh, his recent development uh, of this uh, and application of this model. Uh, which is related to the study of uh, air quality, so the uh, effect of poll pollutants such as particles on uh, our health, uh, on climate, uh, because as we know, aerosol particles may uh, work as uh, cloud or ice condensation nuclei, and uh, uh, many different subjects that uh, basically, in a way or another, need aerosol information. So. Uh, thank you, the floor is yours, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Gabriel. So, thank you everyone to uh, join this seminar. So, I'm going to talk about uh, some of all my research in my group, a uh, more related aerosol, and also application of the aerosol. What's the implication of aerosol? Uh, new body formation, size information, other little health, climate forcing, and climate interventions. So it seems quite some topic, but uh, I will. Okay. So I first I give very quick introductions about the aerosol. Then I'll spend a little bit time talking about the new particle formation and the new creation series. Uh, I also describe uh, the APM model we developed. It's a size resolve model. Then I will quickly go through the some application uh, how the aerosol new particle formation called APM can be used to address some scientific questions. I will not go through all in detail, but I will want to focus this one a little more detail. Also, so I just touched that and give you kind of the idea of what we are doing and how that may relate to some of the real world problem. And uh, the particle formation, country formation, and the next next generation aviation is a emerging one of the emerging kind of research aviation industries. They wanted to help ask us to help them to solve a problem. So I want to illustrate in more detail. I think that you probably uh, Daniel uh, was here studying climate interventions. So we also involved in that stress virus injection. That's also related. So I also will talk a little about that. So aerosols, why we study aerosols? So basically, in my view, there are two important issues related to aerosols. One is the air quality and health. So today we see some aerosols, the dust, so different places, you know, different kind of the issues. Uh, like in Asia, you get a lot of air pollution. And of course, air quality really helps. If you inhale the particles, they will cause some health problems. So that's a concern. Another issue, also related to aerosol, is climate change. So we already experienced the global warming. How the climate change related to the aerosol? We know aerosols affect the really for uh, scattering of light, and also affect the cloud of precipitations, which is through the aerosol indirect effect. So both are a really important issue, and that's why we want to study aerosol. So quickly, why we study health? And of course, aerosol impacts the health, but 
in addition to the errors, the size is important. So what is shown here is the importance of the I think that's going to cover a little bit. I'm not sure it will disappear on. Disappear, will disappear. OK, yeah. yeah. So one message I want to give is the size is important. Not a, I think in a lot of case, we're talking about PM10. Just all the particles less than 10 microns or PM2.5. So that's in some air quality health study. But more detail, actually, different sites have different impact. What I wanted to show here is the response of when you inhale. So it's some kind of response, your health response to the air of different sites. It seems these particles bigger than 200 nanometers really have a strong impact. I think the reason is the smaller the particles, the deep the aerosol can get in the lung cell. And some of the ultrasound people find that they can end up in the blood stream and even get into in the, in the brain. So that's why the size also matters. Uh, so my, my research focuses a lot on trying to get an understanding of size. For the climate impact, I just give one example here, and they have thousands of paper published on that. So this paper find uh, the small, very small particle we call the ultrasound particles. These are the particles less than 100 nanometer. In this case, they less than 50 nanometer. So these are very tiny particle, but they can activate form the cloud droplet. If they form the cloud droplet, they can change the cloud dynamics which can affect a lot of things. So you can see small, very small particles, they can enhance the convection and the precipitation. So that's why also important in the climate aspect, health, climate, both situations, the size matter. And our research focuses a lot on the small part of particles. We call it ultrafine particles. So where does this ultrafine particle come from? One major source is from the new particle formations. So in the atmosphere, if you look at the outside alone, it's a dust. Dust is, we call it the primary particles. It's a direct emit from the ground, from the virus burning sea salt. These are called primary particles, usually little big. But an ultra particle is usually very small. So let's look at this figure. This is some measurement. Of course, they are so small, so you cannot see them like the dust, you probably can see them. But this small particle is the only instrument you can measure that. So what is shown here is the measurement of the particle size distribution, the time, x, x is the time, y is the size, and the color is the concentration. So this is the measurement of the size in New York State. Our research center have a station. So what you see is, on a daily basis, you see a lot of particles appear, starting from about seven nanometers, then they grow. So this kind of a shape, some of you probably know it's called a banana shape. It's like a banana, it also just form and they get grow to the size. So if you look at the base without a new particle formation, these are the concentrations, usually around a thousand or so. But when you have a new particle formation, you suddenly increase the particle to 10,000. So these are the new part we call new particle formations. Actually, in the troposphere, where the particle come from in terms of number concentrations, it's come from these new particle formations. So that's why there are a lot of interest in studying the new particle formations. Uh, some of you probably know the cloud experiment in the third. And they use the high energy beam, try to ionize the chamber, study the new particle formation. So, in the last decade or so, they published quite some paper in the nature and science, all try to understand how these particles form. So, these particles form actually they are come from molecules. So, that was from molecule, and they sticking together. We call call it new new particle formation process. It's molecule getting together and sticking and they form the clusters. And when they form clusters, they are stable, they grow. And then you can measure that. And you see these the particles just appear and appear. Uh, 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 the major source of the particle in the atmosphere. So these are the, we call the new particle formation. Basically, it's, 
is the molecule getting together from the particle. And these particle glow in one hand, they will affect the health. Another is the effect clock. See, we know every cloud drop needs an aerosol to form. So these aerosols just become part of the cloud droplet. So this process actually is important. They link emissions, especially the precursor emission like biogenic emissions or SO2 emission, NOx emissions, and also the chemistry, because this gas goes through the chemistry to the particles and also the social the climate impacts, health, climate. So new party formation is link emission chemistry to the particle and other things. So that's new particle formation is the intensive study. There are different kind of new question series are uh, currently available. So one is what we call the urinary homogeneous like the water nucleation. A lot of study in the chamber. If you get super situation, you can water nucleation. But the water homogeneous never happen usually in the happening in the atmosphere because you really need a very high super situations. Uh, uh, and uh, usually in the atmosphere, you have aerosols, they just condense larger than nucleate. In the atmosphere, you can have the binary nucleations, which involve water and a sulfur acid. We know sulfur acid like water, they can nucleate. And you can also think about plenary, you have ammonia in the atmosphere. Ammonia can help the nucleations. So that's called terminal homogeneous nucleations. We actually study a lot on ion mediated nucleations because we know in the atmosphere you also have the ion always there, and they have come from the cosmic ray ionization or from radioactive material from the soil. So you always have the ion. Ion can help the nucleations. So that ion just attracts the molecule together and forms the cluster and ion. That's why I think in the past they have studied about the if the cosmic ray change due to the solar cycle, solar activity, they may change the ion production, then change the air also, then change the climate. So that's one aspect of the search. Another is the ternary ion equation. So it's basically on top of that, it is ammonia, because we know atmosphere have ammonia. Uh, I think last decade, there are also argument about the amines as a strong base for the nucleations. So if you have amine, amine can help with nucleation. Then the organics. So in the atmosphere, we have a lot of the organic species come from the biogenic emission and anthropogenic emissions. Some of these organics, they can involve in nucleation with stuff as in the world and with and without ions. Uh, nucleation can also involve other species. There are a lot of study like nitric acid, uh, iodine species, other stuff or compound. So a lot of different kind of study have been going on trying to understand what really controls the particle formation in the atmosphere. As we emphasize, these are a major source of the particle in the atmosphere. So in the next uh, few slides, I will just uh, discuss one of the theory we developed, uh, we call ternary ion nucleations. So try to understand, uh, we develop a model and try to predict uh, and what are the conditions these particles can form. So they uh, go back to the cloud or certain cloud chamber study. So in, in this study, the purpose is try to understand uh, different law, law of sulfur acid, ammonia, and the cosmic ray on the aerosol nucleations. So this is published in the uh, in the paper by uh, Kirby et al. So what they find is when you, what is shown here, the nucleation rate. So the rate of particle formations. Uh, what are the, here is the X, X is the ammonia concentrations. And the different curve is just different kind of the conditions. Uh, so when is the ion, when, so the key message here, when the ammonia concentration increasing, so nucleation rate increasing. When the ion concentration increasing, if you get more ion, you get more particle formed. And usually when you have more stuff acid, you also get more nucleations. So this chamber study is well controlled. So it's a good constraint of the model. So 
This is an ex experimental study. Of course, you have limited condition. You cannot measure all the condition. You are uh, only under certain conditions. So we try to develop a model based on the first principle, the physics. So we know the particle formation is controlled by the molecule. Basically, molecule interact and interact together. What controls the formation is the thermodynamics of molecules. So in the atmosphere, we know we have a sulfur acid, we have ammonia, and we have water. And we also have ions. So what we consider in this model in very detail is the positive ion composed of the sulfur acid water. This is without ammonia. And also the cluster, you have ammonia. And the neutral one just without charge, that's a negative. And they will involve when you have ions, they will cluster with sulfur acid. And they may uptake some ammonia and they grow depending on thermodynamics. Under some conditions, they may not, not, not stable, they just evaporate. But if the temperature cool enough, they may nucleate. Positive ion and negative ion may recombine from the neutral. And the neutral cluster can glow and all may evaporate. So we consider all these detailed first principle interactions, and we get the thermodynamic data from both quantum chemistry calculation and also laboratory measurement to understand what molecule kind of thermodynamics. So if you are interested, you can look in that paper. But I think the message here is just we focused on the thermodynamic thermodynamic of molecular interactions and solve all the differential equations and see how the particle form. So one key message here is when you have ammonia, without ammonia, you have the Gibbs free energy. So what forms the cluster, different number of molecule, you will need a certain nucleation barrier. But if you have ammonia, you see the nucleation barrier just reduce a lot. So one thing is if you have ammonia, really can help the nucleation. In order to form the cluster form, you need to overcome that nucleation barrier. So that's the idea of classic nucleation. That's why amine ammonia can help nucleations. And uh, depending on where you are, if you have lot of ammonia, you can enhance the nucleations. So we develop this model. Of course, we want to compare with measurement. And the one compare is use cloud measurement, which is well controlled under well con uh, controlled conditions. So what is shown here again is the nucleation rate and the ammonia concentration under the conditions in the laboratory, the so sulfur acid concentration they measured and the temperature and the humidity. So simple here is the measurement. So red one is they have the high beam. You have more ionization. This is just natural cosmic ray. You see that when you get more ion, you get more nucleation. If you have more ion, ammonia, you get more nucleation. So these two curve is my model prediction. You see the model really match the observ observation very well. This other curve is based on other study. So some of the other parameterization by other group. So you, they are capture some of the variation, but, uh, but didn't capture all of that. So we feel our model is completely robust. And the model, because it's based on thermal dynamics, based on physics, we can predict all kinds of conditions. What's the nucleation of the function of sulfur acid, ammonia, lead humidity, temperature, ionizing rate, and surface area. So we can just plug in and calculate. And we develop this lookup table, actually, that can be used in the model. This nucleation re reduces the internal homogeneous nucleations if you're without ions. And go to the bind the nucleation without ammonia, if you remove the ammonia. And if without ammonia, without ion, it's just the binding of the nucleation. So we develop this six dimensional lookup table, and this is published in the GMD. Everyone can download and just plug in to do some calculations. What's the new particle formation and what conditions on this sixth parameter? So that's the uh, new particle formation theory we developed. Uh, I want to pause here a little bit to see if. Anyone have any question about the new creation? I know I kind of rushed through uh, some of the things.
but if you have any question or you want to clarifications, uh, I'm happy to help you before I move to a little slight different topic. I don't know if you will have an intermediate question. Uh, yeah, it's okay. You are yeah, not a waste of your last moment. I actually have one question. Uh -huh. How do you initialize this kind of model? Because you have many beans, so at least in the first uh, steps, you should have a starting point. Yeah. So that's uh, quite typical. I mean, yeah, so that's a really good point. So the first step, I just there are two things. One is there are pre-existing particles that's initialized based on measurement. So you have some big particle there. For this starting, we starting with the molecules. So yeah, yeah, first the beam, like stuff acid, you have 10 to 8, just put a 10 to 8 here. If you have iron, cosmic grade, you just generate and then let the equation evolve. At a certain point, it reaches that state. So you continue to generate the stuff acid, continue to maintain that stuff acid. You continue to generate ions. They reach a state state, and we use that state state as a nucleation rate. So that's the idea. Any other question? What do we No, it's because it's a box model is very quick. A few seconds, then you just run one case. But I mean, how many? So you're the table. The or, no, just state the state. Oh, yeah, after you set the table, few hours get a set state. So everything gets set state. Yeah, then we use that as a nucleation rate that we use. So that's kind of the more on the microphysics and the nucleation and the chemistry. No, nucleation, nuclear particles are really very small. They need a time to glow, and it glows to a size of different size. That's why we need a size resolve model to illustrate how they glow to the different size and what it means, what's the applications. So now I will spend some time to describe the model we developed we call APN. It's a size resolved, it's a different beams, uh, advanced particle micro microphysics model, and a couple of with different regional and global models to study a size resolve process. So again, we try to capture the physical process happening in the atmosphere. And we know in the atmosphere there are two types of particles. One is called second particle. Second particle basically the particle formed. It's from the gas. So you have an SO2 emitted from anthropogenic or maybe from other source, uh, volcano, uh, uh, DMS, oxidized. They get oxidized. They with iron, amine, and ammonia, they form these very small particles. Then they will glow by condensation of sulfate or uptake of the nitrogen and ammonia. So if you go to measure the composition, you, you know you have the ammonia, you have the nitrate, you have sulfate. But in the atmosphere, we know have organics. So these VOC, volatile organic carbons, and come from tree, from all the vegetation, from anthropogenic emissions, they will get oxidized. So we call that an aging process. And when they oxidize, they get a really low volatile. They can condense on the particle and grow these particles. And some of the less, uh, more volatile, they can get in the particles through the partitions. So that's a chemistry process. So the idea is these particle forms, they can grow to the bigger size. That's and have an impact. Of course, atmosphere, you also have the dust from Sahara, from other places, dust particles. You can have sea salt, have the black carbon, soda particle, or organic carbon. These particles can get coated through the condensation and coagulation. And these particles just evolve in the atmosphere. So we try to capture this kind of process. And of course, these particles can uptake the water because some of the components are high uh, hydrophilic. Uh, so you can just take the uh, uh, wort and they have the weather size. And these particles can get removed by the dry depositions or aerosol cloud interactions, uh, affect cloud and get removed. So this basically is the life cycle of the aerosol in the atmosphere. And we want to simulate this process, starting from new particle formation to kill they get removed and they grow, that's we predict the aerosol. So in order to do that, we have to couple that 
system model to some kind of the transporter model. So in the past, we have published this model to the GeoScan, uh, which as Gabriel worked in the model in the past. We also actually covered the WolfCam. So WolfCam, they have aerosol model, we, but we feel it's not good enough. We put our own aerosol model in the WolfCam. And we are actually working on putting the Earth system model, the CSM is the NCAR model. We are team up with EPA, US EPA. They also want to study the ultraviolet particles. So they found us and we collaborated and put a uh, system APM into CMAP. So that's an air quality model, it's EPA air quality model. So you use wall, drive that. So, so we are working on that to try to understand the size resolve process. So quickly give you some examples. So for GeoCam, we can simulate the global uh, particles. So what is shown here is the new particle formation rate in the different place uh, on the two seasons, one is April and July. So you immediately see the very strong seasonal variations. Usually in Ukraine, like cold weather, and but you need a full chemistry. So we spring is a good time for new creations. But summer, sometime you get new creations. Uh, we compare with some measurement of size distributions. So what is shown here is the spring and the summer for Beijing and New York, the size distributions. So these are the measurement, uh, measurement and we have the model simulations. So you see actually model captures these kind of the events and we know these are the important source. So we use the nucleation data we developed and try to understand that. So that's another case we can run long term. Actually we do a global simulation for 30 years in the past. We get a side distribution of every, every glitter the box. They are side distributions and we compare with some measurement. So that's we can compare with optical properties and all the particle number. So that's we do the validations. So if you look at this multi-year particle number measurement, we can, based on size distribution, derive anything we want, CCN, optical properties. So that's just another validation of all the validations, how errors have changed in the past uh, decades or several decades. And we also put in the WolfCam, of course, the wolf camp is more regional. So you study more the regional events. So what is shown here, we again we look in the wolf camp APM, look at the regional spill process, uh, particle number. So you'll see a lot of nucleation can happen depending on what the time. And this nucleation can generate a lot of particle number. So that CN10 is a particle bigger than 10. Without nucleation, usually you do not have a lot of number, but when nucleation happens, just number just increases a lot. So we find uh, new creations really a dominant source of the particle number, internal number. Uh, we also look into that. If we turn off the ammonia, let's say there are no ammonia, then we find a new creation will not happen. Particle number just goes very small, which is controlled by the primary particles. So again, the message here is ammonia is important. Uh, but in the later new creation, actually, sulfur acid, iron, and ammonia are important for the new particle formation. That's why we developed this kernel nucleation model, and we feel it's a major source of a particle in the atmosphere. Okay. Uh, so these are just different kind of days. You see the nucleation events can help change the particle number. We also covered uh, the model to the a system model, a uh, CSM, so we can resolve the size distribution and we we can predict the CCN and cloud condition nuclear, which is important for the climate impact. So we compare with some measurement and we reasonably capture that. So that's the, another study. Uh, as I mentioned, we are working on putting in the CMAC, this is air quality model, uh, try to understand how in the region scale, how the size resolves the process, uh, especially the ultrafine particle uh, concentrations. So that kind of quickly goes through the, we have a new creation, of course they need a glow, then they have different size resolved properties, we need them to model. 
So in the next, uh, uh, I wanted to go through some of the application. How this can be used to address some questions. Uh, first, I will show some of health effects. We also collaborate with the School of Public Health to look at the health effects of ultrafarm particles. So that's the, why we focus on the uh, uh, new particle formation. We also actually do some machine learning, use the detailed aerosol microphysics to improve the global model. Uh, I want to spend a little more, actually more time on the aviation, as I mentioned earlier. Then maybe if I have time, we'll also talk about the climate interventions. So health effect uh, will be very quick. Uh, basic idea we simulate the model, get a long term ultrafarm particle number concentration. That's the PM 2.5, that's the ultrafarm. Since we have a side distribution, we can calculate uh, any kind of the combination, PM 2.5, PM 1. So ultrafarm basically the particle less than 0.1 nanometer. And you see, usually they are consistent, but uh, if you look at the seasonal variations, they are actually different, the trend are different. The spatial patterns are the same because they have similar source. Uh, their temporal correlation is weak. So a lot of studies in the past focus on PM 2.5, but more and more research looking at ultrafarm. And I think uh, uh, last week uh, I attending conference in, in Surrey. So a lot of interest on these ultraviolet particles because they find there are strong health signals there. So we need to pay attention to that. So uh, again, I will not get into detail, but uh, I'm collaborating with the School of Public Health. Use our particle service area, ultrafarm particle number, and connect with health data. We find a quite strong health signal there. So that's we publish uh, this paper uh, there. If you are interested, uh, email me uh, or go to my web page. You can find all these papers, uh, information. Uh, we also try to use the detail because this size is not a lot of detailed aerosol microphysics. Not a lot of models have that. A lot of global models use very simplified or regional model, but also it's important. So we wanted to use machine learning to develop some algorithms that can be used in the global model. So the idea is we train uh, machines use the detailed aerosol micros of the, we call it Geoscam APN, then train that use some just buffer information. So these are a lot of models like Wolfcam, Geoscam, they have all the tourist gas, meteorology, and aerosol mass concentrations. But they do not have number. They have to assume something. But we are train the model, we use a detailed microphysics, then we can get the number actually pretty good compared, you just guess it. So that's the idea. We 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 look in that and we put the algorithm in the GIS model, another, another client model. So we we see we can improve a lot. Without that, they sometimes they did the very strange results. But with this machine learning trained, you can get a number right. After you get a number right, you can also have an implication for the errors high interactions. So that's the different uh, prediction based on the, their own schemes, which they call OMA, assume certain size. And uh, that's assume uh, use the machine learning after the machine learning. You see the fourth thing is quite different. Actually, look at here. Without machine learning, the aerosol force is next to 1.46. After the machine learning, it's next to 1.1. So it's 0.35. That's a big deal. That's a big uncertainty. And the IPCC average value is, I think, 0.7, point, next to 0.7, 0.8. So get it closer. So just one kind of application of the detailed microphysics. So that's the applications about the health and the climate. Now I want to spend more time on this issue. I feel it's really interesting and it's emergence. So it's about the particle formation and the next generation aviation. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I studied the particle country during my PhD study, which is 25, more than 25 years ago. 
So I, I, after I found a fixed position in Albany, I moved the global regional modern aerosols. But two years ago, aviation industry approached me to see if I can help them to solve a problem. Then I'm come back to this, and I wanted to describe a little bit why they care about that. So this is the report by International Air Transport Associations. Uh, just the report published last year, and uh, a number of the major aviation industry, Airbus, G, Boeing, and all the major ones is involved. So they want to develop a roadmap for the aircraft technology called net zero. So we know with global warming, everyone has to cut the CO2 emission, including the aviation industry. So they developed this load, load map, and uh, I'm not going to get in detail, but the idea is by 2050, they have to go to net zero. They decide. That's a tough challenge, thinking about the engine lifetime. It takes about eight to 10 years to develop an engine. Then the engine lifetime is 20 years. If you're 2050, you need to get an engine ready pretty soon. So begin to use and phase out the old engine. So a lot of the challenge there. So the idea is they need a next generation, either change the fuel. Basically, they have to change the fuel because they cannot burn jet fuel. Jet fuel emits CO2. But if you use different fuel, your engine have to change. So there are two folks. One is what kind of fuel you can use. You need to change the fuel. Another, you need to modify the engine. So how the particle relate to that actually is connected. We call the nanoparticle, ultraparticle, or particle formations. So these are related. So again, the idea is why they related. Uh, this is the paper pub published by David Lee, the white side. So what I've shown here is global aviation's of effect on the lady forcing. What do you look at is CO2. So CO2 definitely have a warming effect. But what's really concern is you also have NOx effect. So NOx effect is not as much of the CO2. But the country, so when you look at sky, sometimes you see the country, the country spread out from the surface cloud, they have a warming effect. And you'll see that warming effect actually is bigger than the CO2. And that's the bigger concern for the aviation industry. They think, yeah, if we even get a CO2 in the country, we have to deal with that. Otherwise, if you develop an injury uh, engine, and if you do not solve this problem, they may have a bigger, a bigger issue. So they really need to understand, can they avoid, they say they can avoid CO2 by 2050, but they are not sure if they can avoid this country. And that's a big deal, because in the past, there are not a lot of study. So these are all these countries actually form the nanoparticle or ultra particle. Another thing is aircraft all emit a particle. We know a particle have a aerosol cry in the directions. And basically we do not have value. How much is this particle from aircraft if there's cloud? Basically, there are no information. So all these need some kind of study. Of course, this can have also have the health impact. So in the past few years, there are a lot of feed campaign going on trying to understand, especially the country. So what I want to show here is the measurement from x -steps. Uh I focus on the particle. So the point is aircraft emit a lot of particles. And what you should see here, the country, all the country is basically cloud droplets and ice, ice. They need to form on the every drop the form on the particle. Without a particle, you will not form this. So the particle effect this country. In the early days, aircraft aviation industry, can we just get rid of the particle? Then we may avoid the country issue. But measurement indicator, even they get rid of some of the particles, they didn't uh, solve the problem. So I want to just show here. So, these are the changing experiments. You have the aircraft in the front, another aircraft just changed. And then you try to get into the plume. 
And it, see here, after you get in the plume, you see the particle numbers just increase quickly. And they are different kind of number. One is a non-volatile, but they have a lot of photo particles. So usually non-volatile we know is sort of particles. So you see the sort of particles come from combustions. And uh, again, you, if you're getting the problem, you get that. So what do they try to understand? What kind of particle is there? Can they avoid that? And that's you can expect it's a little harder to make the measurement. And they measure a particle bigger than five, bigger than ten, and they can get the concentrations. So basically, that's another approaching. If you see, they get, try to get it closer, you see the number. So aircraft definitely a lot of particles. And the concern is, in addition, these sort of particles, where these particles, does not they play any role uh, in that? So that's some of the things in the past, actually, more than 25 years ago, when I do the PhD study, say a lot of measurement, that's where I do the study, try to combine the measurement with the theoretical study, try to understand what's going on. So that's a measurement from DLR, and that's the time when I started my research, studied how these particles are formed because they measure these particles. And we study from the ion molecules because in the aircraft, things happen so quickly. We cannot use the classic theory, classic approach. We need to solve the equation thermodynamics kinetically. So that's when I started uh, modeling these process. And uh, we did publish quite some paper. And uh, one thing we found is we found the chemical ions really important for these volatile particle formations. So what is shown here, these are sort of particles, but you see a lot of volatile particles. And when you have ion, you get a bimodal distribution. Then we find organics also important when in the case when sulfur is really low. And uh, about, I think, 2009, we published a paper with burn culture. So in that time, we think if we if the engine in in current engines, these country is dominated by sort of particles. But if you can get a little sort of particle, can you get a little of the country? We find no, the so volatile particle become important. So even you get a little sort of particle, the volatile particle become important. And that's our prediction in the 2009. So the reason in the aviation industry now they get interested, uh, that's the review paper. See, if you get a little of salt, volatile particles become important. So aviation industry now they can get a little of salt, but they find they cannot, it's harder to get a little of these volatile particles. So they need to understand what controls these volatile particles. Uh, and that's the prediction of our model. Uh, back to 2000, 2009. So that's the, I think the about two years ago, I come back to this issue. So kind of quickly, what's going on? That's a, during my PhD study, we published quite some paper on the aviation. Then I moved to global modeling and particle formation in the atmosphere. We spent quite some time publishing a lot of paper on the nucleation. Now we come back to this issue. So we based on the updated model and uh, the theory and try to look into the country issue and also solar engineering because solar engineering also looking at the same problems. They need the injection of stuff in the atmosphere and see what's going on. So kind of the interesting after two decades come back to study that. Uh, at that time, we thought the aviation program kind of finished the normal interesting, but uh, it's kind of surprising and interesting to see after two decades. It's at least uh, uh, the aviation industry have a different issue need to solve. So we published some paper uh, just recently uh, on geoengineering on ESG, and we just uh, submitted uh, some results quickly. I will show you later on to the uh, to the uh, EST just uh, a few months ago on the country formations. So, so idea is we, we compare with some measurement. Uh, again, the changing ex experiment use the sustainable aviation fuel, see how that may affect 
and we use all the measurement results to constrain our model. And we try to understand, do we understand how the uh, eyes are formed? So what is shown is a sort that's the eyes, that's the measurement. We try to understand why not all the sort get activated. In some case, this every sort get activated, but in some case not. And we find actually the activation of a sort of particle is decided by size of the primary sort. So we know sort is the aggregate, but actually these stars are important. So that's a new finding. We found these activations are based on small size. And uh, and we also look into the if we reduce the sort, when the aviation industry have a way to reduce sort to this range. In the original, they think they can get a little country or country effect will be very small. But based on our predictions, you will get still under dependent condition, you can get a lot of the ice form. So that's why uh, they approach us to try to understand, can we get rid of these volatile particles? So this basically is uh, the improvement of the early study. We found these volatile particles, again, is very important. Actually, the more important than previously we found. So which, of course, we do not have measurement. So that's why in this new measurement, volcans, and also the Boeing have also get a measurement last year. They measure around these regions. Actually, based on the preliminary results, actually it's consistent with our model predictions. So we try to look at more on that. So that's the aviation. Uh, I think uh, it's 45 minutes. I will pause here a little bit. Uh, see if anyone have any questions before I go. Probably need five more minutes on the geoengineering stuff uh, if we have time. So that quickly kind of goes through about a whole new particle formation. So in the aviation, again, the new particle formation, how the size affects different kinds of things. And this is just application to the aviation problem. Anyone have any question about uh, these topics here? They can respond yeah, or we can discuss later after we finish everything. Yeah. Okay. So this is one applications. Another is new particle formation in the engineering kind interventions. So some of you here are familiar. So I'm more on why we wanted to start this issue. So we know last year is really warm. There's a lot of extreme heat, and that's a temperature. Last year, every month, you are on record. And the part above, uh, bring the record a lot. So basically, on average, our temperature is already 1.5 above the pre industry, which is a kind of Paris agreement. You want to maintain that. Uh, and uh, there are quite some report, like the IPCC report. World is on blink of the catastrophic warming. These are reports, some news published that. And that's why people talking about can we do something to intervent the climate? And that's from the NOAA. There are different ways. So one thing we focus on is stress of aerosol injection. Like a volcano, you put the aerosol there, getting the light back and the cool earth down. Of course, it's very controversial, we know. Uh, but we do not have a lot of other choice. So I want to quote this. This is a uh, WMO publishes ozone assessment. And the first time they have a chapter on the effect of the stress of aerosol injection on the ozone. I want to quote here. So the idea is we will have global warming probably like this way. If we do not do much global warming, just go there. But if we do a lot of the emission, dramatic emission cut, and also CO2 removal, we will go like this orange line. But we will above one point degree. Then can we do something? That's called peak shear. 
can we just control build by some time? So Earth is not a, a close, very danger temperature. So we are not a close tipping point. And uh, the message here in this report is SAI or maybe other SIM may be the only option we have in order to control temperature 1.5. Even you cut the emission very dramatically, we still no way to control 1.5. So that's the reason why we need to understand SAI. And uh, National Academy of Science in the US published a report that we need to understand more about the SAI. And the one quote is, the size is really important. If you do the SAI, the size distribution is important. What's really control the size distributions? So that again, relate to how new particle form, how the size evolve. And uh, that's why we need to use the size resolved model. So we did some study looking at the plume scale process, and then if you inject SO2 or sulfur acid, how size evolve. So I will not get into detail. If you have time, uh, interest in, you can look in my EST paper. So the idea is if you inject, the, there are different debates. Should we inject the sulfur acid or SO2? Things will happen differently. So if you inject sulfur acid, you probably just form a lot of particles. If you inject SO2, SO2, the chemistry is slower. So all the SO2 may be condensed on the particles already there, bigger, make them bigger, they just fall down rather than form a small particle, and you don't achieve what you want to achieve. So that's another reason we need to start understand what controls the process, and what that means if someone do that. You don't want to just dump some CSO2 there and didn't achieve what you want to achieve, or make things worse. So that's why we need to study, we need to understand uh, the process. So we did some study. So to summarize, uh, what we talked today is new particle formation is really an important source of the ISO in the atmosphere. Uh, it's an important source of ultrafine particles, which is important for the health. And also it's the important source of the CCN, actually dominant the CCN on a global scale. So they dominate the CCN, of course they affect the cloud, precipitation, and all the climate. So, it's really important to understand what controls their formation. So we develop a new creation schemes to predict that. Uh, we find the uh, iron and ammonia both can enhance the nucleation in the atmosphere. So nucleation form target very small. In order to really study the impact, we need a size resolved model. So we develop a, a size resolved APN model and a couple of into the different kind of regional and global model. And uh, we found a uh, reasonably predict a uh, uh, part of some uh, process aerosol properties. And the results have been used uh, to study the health and also the climate forcing. Uh, we found the new party formation side distributions, microphysics important for the some emerging research of, for example, shown, shown here the next generation aviations and also the climate interventions. So it's a lot of more research, but we need a, a detailed understanding of physics. A lot of the like solar geoengineering just uh, put something there, assume they are working that way, but we need to know much better about the physics. So starting about two years ago, both the uh, a foundation approach me, both the aviation industry approach me just to understand this detailed process, plume scale process, how particles are formed, if the condition change, what will change, what's the implications. So all this is based on physics and we try to look in that. So I'll stop here, take a little bit longer than uh, for this for his some minutes, but uh, I hope you will learn something and uh, I welcome any question you may have. And uh, if you have time, if you want to discuss more, I'm available after the talk as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Fangun. Very interesting and comprehensive uh, illustration of uh, the very impressive work that you did.
Uh, is there any question from the audience? Thank you, thank you. Yeah. For what concerns the stratospheric injection, at which extent we should be applied, let's say, we should be reach uh, an agreement between, uh, let's say, half of the countries in the world, and then... Um... Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So, stratospheric injection is a, it's a very challenging issue. So there are some study and there are policy implications. Uh, and also how you do it. So engineer, there are engineering problem. A lot of past study just assume model. So there are, I, I feel the challenge only is engineering, how you do it. Another is the policy implication. Who decide how you coordinate between different countries? That's need a lot of negotiation discussions. Uh, but before that, you need to understand the scientific understanding as well. So, so there are discussion going on. So they need to involve more third world country and developing country, all these countries that may most strongly affected by that. So I think that now the issue here, currently we do not have any kind of policy guidance. Someone can just go and do it. No control. And you probably need the news like in the US or some companies, they just uh, they develop a country, release the bloom, carry over some of the SO2, and uh, use that as a credit for the carbon. This thing, you put a one gram of the SO2 there, equivalent to how many of the carbon you get removed. So someone just do that, and there's no way to, currently there's no policy, no guideline. And the United Nations try to develop some kind of the coordinated the project, but it's ongoing. And I feel it's really important to prepare and develop and debate all these things before someone really do that. And one last thing the concern is if you have extreme heat, heat like the India, which is not well prepared, it's very hot, very high humidity, and not a lot of air conditions. Or even in some condition, if you get extreme heat, your electricity system broke down. A lot of people may die because of extreme heat. Then the country may want to do themselves. They say, no, we cannot tolerate that more. We just want to do something. And just go and do these things. So technically, based on theoretically, they can just carry over and do something. But if we don't understand, they may not achieve what they want to achieve. Like they put SO2 heat there, they thought they can mimic the volcano. But a volcano is different. Volcano, you put a lot of things just at a short time, huge amount. Aircraft, you can carry one by one. And slowly, things could be different. So that's my research try to understand. If you do the aircraft, the carry things over, what will happen? Can you achieve what you want to achieve? So that's, I feel, a lot of research needed to be done there. And that's, you need to have a good understanding of physics. You need to have a good understanding of the new particle formation process, how particles are formed, because what you carry will be carry the gas, put the gas there, not put the aerosol, because aerosol is really hard to control the aerosol size. If the aerosol is too big, it just fall down. So, so, and it's very small, it's just really hard to control the small aerosol. So a lot of issues need to be studied there. I have a question about uh, the previous, was about in the middle. Uh, you show the graph, uh, mm -hmm. which is like the typical IPCC graph with the uh, aviation, uh, yeah, 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 climate policy contribution, and uh, just for the uh, probably I never got the importance of uh, uh, the particles because at the end there were the two parts. Yeah, it's answer two red parts, which are yeah. I mean, the, the aviation part. So that's only aviation. Yeah. So aviation compared to the, they, they are small. So they are talking about 0.1 water per square meter, 100 something. That's the net aviation. But uh, currently they contribute about 
only to four percent of to the global warming. So this is not only for the aviation, but aviation is projected to increase by factor four by 2050. So if you're thinking projected to factor four, that's that's we'll get more. But uh, all other sectors they will reduce the CO2 emissions. So aviation thinks they also need to do that. They are not decide they have to go to net zero by 2050. And uh, so that's point one. But uh, as we point out, CO2 contribution actually is only one third, one third of the global warming. So you get a little of CO2, not enough. You need to get a little of the control. But that's hard to get a little. And uh, there are talking about different things. Some of your product here, they try actually you know, all the aviation industry try to avoid. So one way is you need a really good weather forecasting where the country will form. If you have a country form, you just uh, go down a little bit, uh, get around the hair, avoid the country formation. That's actually active research going on there. But uh, forecasting is a challenge. Can you forecast them accurately that the country will form? But one argument is, if you have guitar a little bit, you will burn more fuel. And if you burn more fuel, you get more CO2 emits and all things. So, okay. yeah. I mean, all of this is just for I mean, so that's only aviation. aviation huh? Yeah, so that's only aviation. So if you see aviation, also have different I misunderstood mean, I mean, the graph in different, different times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's oh. only aviation. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, great. Yeah. Well, actually, probably most of the sources of uh, soot and CO2 are the same. I mean, if they change uh, technology, probably they will solve. Yeah. Also, so the... CO2, you can change like by fuel, you can change yeah. that. By doing CO, you can get a little, get a little of soot. Yeah. But the sort of forcing, if you look at sort of forcing, sort of they are forcing us more based on because they are not a lot of soot. So Safi maybe have some cooling effect. Yeah. But uh, I think Chi is a country. So in the past, uh, in the current jet fuel, all the country are actually because of soot. Soot form the country. So in the earliest, you see, hey, if we can get a little of soot, can we get a little of country? Our prediction, our model prediction in 2009, if you get a little soot, then this is a volatile particle become important. Then you need to get a little volatile particles. If you want to get a little volatile particle, you need to get a little of all the precursors. That's really hard. They can get a little of stuff, but uh, they cannot get a little of all organic compound. But we need to try to understand what really controls these volatile particles. So that's related to the particle formation we are dealing with. Uh, the research we are we are looking on. So things get connected, the particle formations and also the layer world problem. And I think the like Lois, Lois G, a major en engine maker, they need to decide by 2028 what kind of direction they want to go. So they have different options now available, but they need to decide which engine they want to make that will be used by 2035. So that's a bigger challenge for them. They don't want to spend a lot of money, develop engine and find a, a problem. And uh, so that's kind of really, they are really want to figure out how we try to avoid the country. Uh, CO2 is well known. Can we avoid that? Uh, use whatever mechanisms to do that. So. Thank you very much. Yeah. Another question? I think so. There are no more questions. We can close the seminar so that we uh, stay into the one hour time slot uh -huh, we have uh -huh. also online and i don't know if there is any question uh, from the okay uh, so we thank uh, again uh, professor Kwan Kwan Ju for this very nice seminar and uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for your visit yeah yeah yeah